Good afternoon, FlossTube. It's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I want to welcome everyone to my channel today. I'm very glad that you stopped by to visit with me. I have several things to share with you today. I have updates on my current focus pieces. I have um, some junk and finds, a gift, and um, just want to share some plans, some upcoming plans I have with you. So let's get started. So this work week, I uh, was very busy and again, did not get as much stitching in as I like, would like to have, but I did manage to get a little bit of progress on my two pieces. So my current pieces, I usually have a larger piece and a smaller piece on the go at, the t at any moment. This is my current small piece. This is Spring Quaker by Primrose Cottage. I was hoping to get a finish on that this week, and like I said, I didn't get very much progress. But progress is progress, and this is where I am. So when I left you last week, I had the majority of what you see here. The only things I think I, that I added since then was uh, this, looks like a little um, garden bed of, of tulips, the date, and the outline of this Quaker motif here. So I'm going to sit down with this in just a few minutes or at some point this evening and try to at least get this piece done. My goal will be to finish this one by next weekend. And next weekend I have some great plans. I am going to a 24 hours of cross stitch event at Barefoot Needle Arts and I'm going up with a few friends. I will be with uh, Jacob's wife Cheyenne, uh, which is my daughter-in-law. She is going with me. It'll be her first time in Myrtle Beach, so she's excited. Uh, my friend Kim and Kylie are going as well, and Kira's going to join us for a night. So it's going to be lots of fun, um, probably some shopping, some stashing, some planning, but I'm hoping for a lots of laughing, giggling, and memories made. So I'm sure we're going to take care of all of that. <laughs> so um, I'm going to take this with me if I don't already have it finished. And like I said, hopefully next weekend while I'm away, I will have a, um, a finish on this one. And then my stitch along with my friend Christine, which is the Bristol Squirrel Sampler. I got a little bit done on it last week. Um, just to, for those of you that are new to the channel, this is a piece, oop, I just flung my needle right into me. Thank goodness it's stuck in my shirt. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, for those of you that are not, I'll, um, do, do not watch my channel normally. This piece, I'm stitching on it at least once a week, trying to do at least a letter. If I finish a project, I do two letters. So um, a letter or a motif for the finish and a letter or motif for the week. But I haven't touched it this week thus far. But last week, I put in or completed this motif. Now this motif, there are three or four of them across this page and they all touch the tips of this star, I'm gonna call it a star, all the way across. So this weekend I'll probably, when I sit down uh, this evening, I'm gonna stitch one of those first. Try to complete another star. And then there's another, I wanna say it's a circular type motif that goes here and then that'll be the bottom of this page. So this is page one. The great thing about this piece is that I'm stitching it with Christine and I got to see her this week. Now she lives in Illinois and I don't get to see her often. I did see her at Barefoot Needle Arts Retreat in February. She, we sat together and had a great time, but she was down in my area this week. And again, with work, we had big plans and they just didn't work out. Uh, work got in my way, which really frustrated me and irritated me, but we were able to get together after work yesterday for dinner and we laughed and we did get a little bit of junk in in but I want to share it with you um, we didn't I didn't bring my sampler along um, she did I think she had hers with her but because I didn't bring mine we didn't share them but we have um, we have a love of junking too so she brought me a little gift I want to share now where did I stick it I know I had it. I must have left it downstairs. I'll share it in my next video. But it is an Americana piece of clear glass. Um, it is a container and it has a wooden lid with a ball. Um, I guess you would call it the clasp to hold the wooden lid so you could pull it off. 
It's very cute, but she noticed in one of my videos, I was mentioning that when my son um, is no longer with us here in the house, that we're going to turn his old room into um, my husband's study or his office. And I'm going to decorate it Americana. And so she picked that up when she saw it because she thought of me. But anyway, before we went to dinner yesterday, um, we we were able to squeeze into one of the local needlework or needlework junk and shops before they closed. And I did find a couple of things. So I found another needlework basket. Now I I love finding these. I love them most when they have treasures inside. This one didn't have the treasures, but had the bottom and um, the pin cushion and the lid and I'm going to show it to you now. So I love that you can see it's see not see through but um, it's made with slats around an oval shape. You've got the legs on the bottom, an inlay top and it is hinged so when you lift it up you can see and when I touch this kind of feel the age just with the foam inside and I think it's foam it's not batting and it's a checkerboard. And then the bottom is the same material, but it's so old that whatever it was used and glued in with has just really just petrified, as you can see. So I'm going to, this will be a really easy fix. I looked at some fabrics yesterday thinking that I may want to, um, I'm gonna change it and I didn't see anything I liked. So I'll do some more shopping in the coming weeks. I believe there's a quilt shop in Myrtle Beach. So maybe I can look there next weekend. But I want to replace this. And I like that it's large. Usually I like things a little more dainty. Um, but this is kind of cool. But with it, this is the, um, it's just the price tag. But there's one pin. Now this is taped in. So I know that um, I have removed this earlier. This tape, uh, this pin is rusted a little bit, and um, I can tell that it was sticking there when they put this tag on because it had busted through, and of course the paper was punched up. So of all the pieces that were still remaining in it, um, the only thing that was there was one little pin. But I think it's beautiful. And again, I'd really like to have some shelving in here, and I, I think this is maybe my one... I have less than 10, probably less than six, counting this one of different types of um, sewing boxes, but I think this one's one of my favorite one. I just love everything about it, how small it is, how compact. I love the slat work. It's just a beautiful piece, and it's been well taken care of and loved. There's no dings on it. It just needs a good, um, I probably use some wood soap on it and just give it a quick little once over with a little bit of wax, but it really doesn't need much to, um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So it kind of fit our theme for last week. I had a giveaway and the giveaway winners, I was going to, I told them I'd have two and I'll announce those in just a minute, but there was one other thing I picked up yesterday. I jumped ahead too quickly. Um, Christine and I always end up buying, e <laughs> when we're together, we buy something similar or we start a new project or, so we're going to do something small this time. So I picked up this amethyst glass and I, let me see what they're calling it on the tag. It just says amethyst glass. I was wondering if maybe it was a small egg cup. We saw several little egg cups, but we're going to use these to make pin cushions. And I was thinking a beautiful piece of dark purple um, wool, just a wool ball to put in the top. But I really like this. So we had the same one. And um, it'll just make me think of her when I see her. So just got this. And so that'll be a little upcoming finished project that I do. And then back to the giveaway. So last weekend, like I said, I did a giveaway for these two. Where did I stick them? Right here. Pollinator's Garden. And on the giveaway, I just asked that everyone kind of let me know what your favorite flower are. And there were so many variations, but all beautiful flowers. All but a couple were names you recognize. Roses were a top, sunflowers, lilac, 
um, just beautiful, beautiful flowers. And a lot of the flower choices were linked to memories of mothers or grandmothers, which I thought was very sweet, very, very sweet. And, but this is the giveaway and the two winners I've already commented right before doing this video, I commented and I hope I get the first one right. So the first winner is Jody Suntich 8748 and her favorite were sunflowers. And the second winner is the Nerdy Stitcher and her favorite flower is roses. So I've left a comment on both of your comments on the video and my email address is in the description box below all of my videos so you can reach me there. I just need your address, mailing address information and I will get those out to you depending on when you um, email me your, your um, address, I'd say within the next couple of days. So just um, like again, down below in the description box is my email address and I'll get these out to you. So now we're on to, I'm kind of bouncing around today, aren't I? But the other thing I, I'm working on currently is Tangled, I'm sorry, Tangled Tidings, Merry Christmas by Tellen Emblem. And another that I was hoping to either finish or get very close this week. It was very doable. And again, I didn't stitch. I don't think I have stitched since Tuesday of last week. So the majority of the week I didn't stitch. And you're not going to see much because I have, um, I've rolled it up. So what I did put in since you last saw it was just, I'm calling them quilt, quilted shapes because this is the top of the cartouche or this colored, um, let me show you here, it'll be easier to show here. Right here, and um, even with the, the bird's feet, and I did put those in. So I do have progress on it. It's just not the progress that I was hoping for. Now, I'm going to talk about something else really quick since it's in my mind. I'm going to pick my sampler, my Br uh, Bristol sampler back up. These are new to me this year, actually since October. Now, I purchased these, which are pony needles. And I don't think, let me see. I have these. Now these are just regular silver needles with the colored top for the different sizes. And then I have black ones, which are, I, I was drawn to those because they were different and I had never stitched with a completely black needle. And for some reason, I just, uh, the, the larger one, I wasn't enjoying stitching with them, which was just 28. So when I went back and to Barefoot Needle Arts in February, I picked up these, which is the 26 Pony Needles. They have a white painted tip and they're black. And these are, again, did I say 26s? They're 26s. And I picked up a pair of black 26s. I love them now. It's my understanding from just the few people I've talked to that have used them, they're not always uniform. I think they're made in India. My current favorites prior to now is Bowen. I love Bowen needles. <clears throat> I tell people when they ask me about them that they slide through the fabric like butter, like hot butter. <laughs> but these, I'm really loving the size of them. They seem to be a tiny bit smaller than the U.S. needles in size 26, and I like that. And that may, might just be my imagination. But I have been using this primarily on this Bristol sampler, the ones with the white. But I have been putting using the solid black ones that I had in other ones. Now, does the tip color really matter? No, it doesn't. Um, I bought these because I love the novelty of having the sizes color court, you know, color coordinated with a, a specific color. So that was kind of why I've got those, but I'm really enjoying them. And I don't know of anywhere else. I've only seen them at Barefoot. I'm sure there's other needlework providers that have them, but that's uh, Barefoot Needle Arts or where I got those. And then what else do I have? So those are my three current projects. And now let's get to some plans that I have. So I have a couple of things that I finished last year that were strawberry, um, to do with strawberries. So one of them was a Lila Studio piece, and it's this one here. 
And so it has the pinks and the reds of strawberries and some yellows for the strawberry blossoms, but the tones are very muted. They're like dusty roses, mauves, that kind of color, those kind of colors. And I'm having a trouble. You can see the strawberry blossoms at the bottom with the white and yellow. So I have looked for fabric pieces with strawberries. I have looked for pieces that may have blossoms on it. And I'm gonna share with you what I have found. Um, but I can't find anything specifically those colors. So I don't wanna to go to a solid fabric, but I may have to. But I'm limited um, in my area of choices. I don't have a quilt shop. So that's why I'm looking forward to, to visiting one next weekend. And then I have this one. This is October House um, Strawberry Fair. So it's October House um, Fiber Arts Strawberry Fair. And I really love this one. And it's not wrinkled. That's just the dyeing of the fabric. And so the, I want to show you the couple of pieces that I found. So again, I stitched these last year. And I found this one, yet these two yesterday out shopping with my friend Christine. We went into Walmart looking for something else to finish up an idea. And I found these two. And even on this one is a little more vibrant colored. The, the colors are a little more vibrant than, um, than the Lila Studio piece. But the colors don't look well. So this one's more reds. So that doesn't work. This one works best. And I also have this one, but the size of the actual fat strawberry fabric doesn't appeal to me. But this is too, I'm going to say garish when I put it up next to that. So I'll probably just make bags out of that one. I've dropped one. In, oh, it's in my hand. So when you put those same colors up against the... Lila Studio, again, color families. <laughs> so the, the look will continue, the, the, um, the look, the hunt, it's a hunt. The hunt will continue. Now my plans for this one, just from the shape of it and the way uh, the piece is kind of cut off here, I wanted to make a needle book out of this one and let this side be the spine. So that's my plans with this one. This one, I'm thinking I'm just going to make it into a pin pillow so that I can have a strawberry season bowl because it is very much strawberry season where I'm at here in South Carolina. I've seen roadside stands and farmer's markets with them already. And so next weekend, hopefully, let's keep, keep your stitches crossed for me that I can find a piece that works to finish those up while I'm away next weekend. And with that being mentioned, and this being the October House um, Strawberry Fair, I have her Pumpkin Fair, which is right here kitted. So it will probably be not my next small start, but maybe two small starts away. Um, I really want to start the, again, plans. So when I finish this one this up, hopefully this week, Remember, you're going to keep your stitches crossed for me that I can finish this up this week. I plan to start, because this fabric is Medusa's Gaze by um, Lappin Loops. And I want to stitch the um, Oh How He Loves Us freebie piece from Teresa Koga that she shared with all of us for Easter. And I think that the colors with it being, the part, the wording is a very dark purple, and then the flowers or peace lilies for Easter. I think it'd look great on that fabric. So that's the reason while I have that fabric out, I wanna start that one. This one will be the start after that. So again, this is the same series as this one. So this was Strawberry Fair, the first one. I did this originally as a stitch along with um, Helen D. And that's been maybe two years ago. And I have this one and I have one from last year. I think it was Honey Fair, so it was a B-Skip. And then she released one at Market this year. And another reason I'm very excited to go to Barefoot Needle Arts is all of my market, I usually spread out where I get my market 
items from, and I got them all from Barefoot Needle Arts, and I knew that I would be going up there this coming weekend instead of having them mail them to me next, last month. I said, when I come up, I'll pick them up. And you know I've been adding to that over the past few weeks too. But one of the things that I have in there is this design, Vineyard Fair. Now, October House Needle um, Fiber Arts has graciously gifted me some patterns to share with all of you. So last week, I've already announced the winners from last week. I'm going to be gifting three of these away this week. So sticking with a the spring theme, if you're interested in this piece, and again, I have three of them. What's your favorite item at the farmer's market this time of year? Now, I know some of you are still with snow. But when spring really hits in your area and you have your strawberries and your fresh lettuce and those kind of items, what is your favorite thing to pick up at your local farmer's market? Do you visit them? I love a farmer's market. Here I can get honey, I can get bison, I can get spring onions, and some places have tomatoes. I know they're coming from other areas, but I love spring and summer visiting the farmer's markets here. So let me know what your favorite thing is. And it may just be the crafts, because we have woodworkers that come to ours and things like that. So it's just people like you and I that are selling their wares, whether they're handmade items or things that they've grown in the ground. And um, I just enjoy it. I think it's fun. It's a fun thing to do first thing in the morning on a Saturday morning. My husband and I will go get a cup of coffee and um, we'll take off to the farmer's market. Now this weekend we weren't able to, but we delivered because my husband come out and helped me so I could get through in time to visit with Christine. Um, which I'm so thankful for him. He's such a good husband. But um, we delivered to a farm and they had a farmer's market going on and I didn't know they offered that. So I'm hoping, not next weekend because I'll be busy at Barefoot, but the following weekend, I'm hoping to take off to that farm and see all the things that were offered in all those tents I saw out in the field. So anyway. Please, if you're going to enter, be 18 or older. Please only enter if you're interested in having this piece, meaning you're going to come back and actively see if I've responded to your um, your your comment, your, your response to me down below. Don't mention it is a giveaway. I want it to go to stitchers and not people that are actively looking through YouTube to find free things. I will try to make sure that when I do hold a giveaway, um, I, I don't want it to be duplicated. So if you won last, the two young ladies that won last week, um, if they come up, I will bypass them and, and go to someone else for this week. So these are three. So you've got three chances out of however many comments I have down below. So for the current week, I'm going to be counting the, down, the days down until till time to leave for barefoot next weekend <laughs> every day <laughs> so I'm going to continue to work on both pieces I'm hoping to finish the primrose cottage piece in the next couple of days I'm going to stitch on it tonight I'm going to catch up first I'm going to work on my stitches for this week on the Bristol first and then pick up the the primrose cottage and hopefully I can finish that in a couple of days and I can start focusing on the Merry Christmas that way, possibly, I can have a new start or maybe a new sale with the girls for next weekend. We've rented an eight um, Airbnb, or I have for us, and I'm excited. Um, it's going to be great, but my husband and my son decided that they're going to come up because uh, Jacob and uh, Cheyenne just recently got married, and they're closing on their house on the 22nd, so they will no longer be here with us. And the, the, um, when they realized we were going to Myrtle Beach, they weren't interested. So I invited a group of girls to go. And now they're wanting to go and come up and get their own place while we're there. And, of course, they're not going to be at the stitch shop with us. 
that kind of changes up the dynamics of what Cheyenne and I will be doing the entire time we're there. But we do have my, uh, the majority of our time will be spent with our Stitch friends. So again, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I enjoy my time with them. I'm always inspired. I learned a new, I will learn new tricks and just make some great memories. And until next time, hopefully next weekend, I will pop back in again to share um, share those memories with all of you and to announce those winners and um, hopefully have two finishes to share. Till next time, you keep those stitches crossed for me and I'll see you next weekend. Bye-bye.